All right, don't forget your glasses. Ooh, you want to show Uncle Trav your glasses? She's styling. Movie star! Oh, <laughs> I love it. Do you tell her uh, when she puts on the glasses, she's invisible? Like they do in Big Daddy? <laughs> I don't think we've done that yet. We usually just say, ooh, look at the movie star. I'll be up in a second. We only got two ad reads left. Good luck, Mom. All right, let's make these ad reads last as long as possible. <laughs> <laughs> ah! <laughs> got hit with a shoe. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to New Heights, presented by Wave Sports and Entertainment and brought to you by a, the all-new Experian Smart Money debit card, baby. Woo-hoo, the card that builds credit without the debt. Oh, God. Get yours today, baby. We are your hosts. I'm Travis Kelsey. This is my big brother, Jason Kelsey, and new episodes drop every Wednesday during the NFL season. Subscribe on YouTube, wherever you get your podcasts, and follow the show on all social media at New Heights Show. Click that follow link. Jason, what do we got coming up today? We got a great episode for you guys. Knew it. I knew it. We're going to get into both of our week five road wins. Find out why I might need a pair of pink shoes and uh, get into the huge fan mentions oh. we got last week and talk about the biggest storylines happening across the league. All right now. But first. What's that? As always. As a New news. New news coming in hot, baby. We got new merch, everybody, and Jason mm, is rocking it mm, right now. Mm, we, uh, it's more we like finally new dropped it. Um, new colors. First item of new news is obviously the, the fact that the brand has new New Heights merch officially available at homage.com slash new heights to all the 92 percenters. Make sure you check that out. The shirts are just so comfortable. You know, it's just good material, man. Homage does a good job. They're, they're er, they homage, it. homage, Shout homage. Out to the Ohio brand. I have no idea how to pronounce their name correctly but one thing i do know is that they make comfortable shirts is that your favorite of the new merch that just came out no there's some really cool new colors i'm actually a, a big fan of but it didn't vibe with the phillies had and with the phillies right now in the the playoff hunt okay facing the number one seeded braves um you're gonna get out there and chest bump that uh that furry monster man, and drink some I, beer or what <laughs> i would love to we'll, we'll see what happens last year we had a, a time all timed up with the bye week so it was really easy to get out there uh this week uh this year is a little bit different but if it times up you, you don't got to talk me into chest bumping the fanatic and chugging a beer with him. <laughs> <laughs> that boy out there enjoying every bit of that. <laughs> to all the 92 percenters, if you guys want to grab some new merch or at least see uh, what kind of new swag we got, please visit homage.com slash new heights. Yeah, baby. Check it out now. All righty. Let's get to some fan mentions of the week. First up is a big one. I don't know if you guys saw this. Um, I didn't believe it when I was told it by a reporter coming <laughs> after practice. We got treated up by LeBron, Travis. Yeah, no, that was pretty wild. I, w- I wasn't expecting uh, him to be, you know, listening into the show or like s- at least seeing the uh, social clips. But yeah, there's no chance he's listening to a full episode, but the social clips are good <laughs> enough. Um, Never know, man. The guy's a Northeast Ohio guy, man. <laughs> From King James uh, tweets at New Heights show. Crazy. I can't get an invite to join y'all. Fantastic show. Is it because you guys are truly the kings of Northeast Ohio? And uh, as I claim to be, be honest, <laughs> seriously, you guys are awesome. Man, um, I'm not kidding you. I came in with the media in the locker room, and they were like, so you're getting tweeted at by LeBron now? And I was like, say what? Say what? <laughs> what do you mean? What? Why is LeBron's right? Uh, this was awesome. Um, that was but pretty cool. LeBron man. knows. We've been trying to get him on the show for a while. I know he's <laughs> acting like he's just coming on now, but we've been trying to get him up here for a minute. There's no way we haven't sent LeBron James the invite, you know? <laughs> Oh, yeah. If if we haven't, intern Brandon and intern Jake are going to hear it from us. Ah, yeah, they know they know who's at the top of our list to try and get on here. They know who's out there. <laughs> and and King James has been number one for a long time. Listen, LeBron, you're welcome. Whenever you want to come on, brother. Please, please, we will make it happen. Captain. Grew up watching you play. Uh, we yeah. we uh, have watched your career as Cleveland and Northeast Ohio guys all the way from St. Vincent to St. Mary uh, till now. So. Ooh. It's so crazy, man. Yeah, I, I think it's safe to say it would be an honor uh, to talk to you. Heck yeah. I remember I remember watch. I went to a game down at Cleveland State when I was in seventh grade to go watch LeBron James play high school basketball. He was selling out arenas the world like all over Northeast Ohio because, and like selling so many tickets that they had to take it to a college arena or to a college. Yeah. The Gundarina at the time or the the Cavs arena. It was either one of those two. 
Yeah. And I saw him. I ended up seeing him at Cleveland State, and man, he went off the backboard, threw it down. I was out. I was out of my seat. I was like a little kid getting excited for uh for like the <laughs> the new wave of of what the NBA was going to look like. And uh, sure enough, he didn't disappoint. Man, he just kept rising and rising. And uh, it's been cool to, to follow him. I remember actually watching. Like, uh, like it just kind of came up about uh, LeBron James, like being a great like football player, yeah, and they yeah. sh- showed some of his like high his school highlights. highlights. I remember watching the Channel Five News and seeing those highlights live. Right, they were sh- they would show St. Vincent St. Mary's like, oh, they beat Akron Buthel or somebody, and it would be LeBron out there in a number nine jersey, just mossing everybody. <laughs> She's like, God damn it. He's I mean, gonna be the first football bas- or yeah, football basketball athlete. I haven't been. I mean, I guess I do kind of get this. It's a weird realm to be in now, where you get tweeted at by somebody so big and was so big when you were a kid that yeah. you're still kind of nervous as to like, <laughs> I don't even know how to respond to that. I got to make sure I think something up here. I can't just willy nilly throw a tweet back at this dude. You know what I mean? Like I feel like a school kid again, <laughs> little schoolgirl. This shit's cool, man. Yeah, it was it was wild times watching LeBron come out of Akron, Ohio. When he got drafted by Cleveland. I know. It was electric. It, it was like the hometown hero coming to save the day of, I was, uh, of a failing franchise. All to be back. He, he saved it. it. He came back. He came back. <laughs> he did. 2016, baby. I, know, yeah, I remember. We went to uh, one of the games, didn't we? One we of the sure playoff did. games? We sure did. Ate at uh, one of the steakhouses downtown. Where was that at? Morton's, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Right there in Tower City. I don't know what else to say other than, yeah, we would be happy to uh, take LeBron James. Yeah, no, LeBron, you already know what it is, baby. We need you. Would you, would you, you ask him why? We got to finish the debate of who, of whether or not NBA players can that. play in the NFL. Or we got to ask him why he didn't put you, you didn't he didn't put you on his AAU team when you were coming well, out. Well, I was I couldn't dribble, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't dribble. I didn't make the team. Couldn't dribble. Oh, man. Nobody wanted a 6'5 power forward. You know what I mean? You, you had to be, if you were 6'5, you had to dribble and I, and play defense on the, on the perimeter. And both of those were not my strong suit. It's that tweener. My defense was my offense. If I scored more than my opponent, I won the game. You won the game. Yeah. <laughs> it's all about matchups. That's all it is. That's all it is. Hey, I did my job. Not right now. That's like in hockey when I was back checking. And they're like, Jason, why aren't you skating fast? I'm like, hey, I'm, I'm my guy. If that guy scores, <laughs> that ain't my guy. Why would I skate? I ain't going to waste my energy getting over this guy getting beat. That's his problem. This is before I knew what team sports were about. God damn. GDI, son. <laughs> GDI. Yeah. Goddamn individual. I had to evolve that mentality. Oh, man. Dad, let me know real quick. That's not, uh, that's not acceptable, Jason. <laughs> Next fan mention is something we've been wanting to address. Uh, we got several comments of it on YouTube. Um, at Acid Burn 772. I don't know that we should be taking this <laughs> comment mm. from a guy named Acid Burn. But anyways, next podcast, I am going to count how often you two use the F word. I love the show, but hate the potty mouth. We've gotten this a lot. Potty we're mouth, try- yeah. We don't try to swear. It's it just, just happens sometimes. It feels sometimes. like we're just in the same room together, yeah. and we're not talking to anybody else. So I'm sorry if I cuss every now and then. We don't mean to then. offend anybody. We want yeah. the show to be inclusive, but sometimes you just got to fucking say what you want to say. Yeah. It's, and it's, uh, Trav. I got to widen my vocabulary is what it is. I just have such a short vocabulary <laughs> that I just use... The words for everything, you know what I mean? Yeah, but I just feel like swear words sometimes that it's 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 a necessity it's to it's explain fitting. a certain emotion. You can really just pierce somebody yeah. and really make Cuss a statement. The air. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think about starting a swear jar on the show? A swear jar? That's pretty funny. Yeah, like just start a counter every time we swear. It it counts it right. Okay. And then maybe potentially down the road. That count we turns into some type of back. charitable donation based off of the count. Ooh, like, where do you think it would go? I think we could figure that out. Maybe leave it up to 92 percenters to help us pick a charitable foundation. Maybe send a kid to college. Maybe us swearing pays for somebody's college tuition. <laughs> then it's good swearing, right? Then you want us to swear. I think that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. Do you like that idea? I think it'd be fun. The fucking New Heights College Scholarship. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Huh? I don't know how we got here, but I'm in. I'm in. Let's fucking do it. Let's fucking go. That's two right there. I don't know what two means. Is that two thousand? Or is that we got? I don't. I don't know. It, 
we gotta see we what gotta, the count looks well, like. Yeah, we gotta. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Math is to be to be determined. We do know the count will be indicative. Indicative. I don't even know if that's the right word. That's why I swear because I, 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 a lot of times I just throw out random long words like they mean anything. All right, here we go. That's here it for we new go. News. Keep it moving. Thank you for uh, bringing that to our attention. Hopefully, we can send a kid to college and uh, get him a fucking education so they're not swearing go. all the time. Cheers, boys. <laughs> That does it for fan mentions for this week. Thank you always, 92 percenters, for giving us some good content to talk about. Um, Yeah. Let's keep this thing moving and uh, jump into no dumb questions, because everybody knows there's no dumb questions. Just dumbass people. Just dumb. Just dumb. Just a world full of dummies. And you're looking at two of them. But your questions are not stupid, so keep them coming, baby. No Dumb Questions is brought to you by Buffalo Wild Wings. Hey! (laughs) Let's go, sports bar. (laughs) There we go. Got it on. Perfect. Nailed that one. Nailed it. First one uh, from at Fatty Cat 3. All right. Now. <laughs> yeah, it's a good handle. On threads, can you explain zone coverage? That's a fair question. That's a pretty fair question. What is the uh, mysterious zone that everyone keeps mentioning? And why do I always think of Top Gun's highway to danger zone? That's a fair question. And uh, I guess it kind of, I mean, it's kind of like a top zone. Or Top Gun's uh, Highway to the Danger Zone, right? It's a little... Zone coverages? Yeah. It's like a little... I don't know. Highway to... Well, there is a danger zone, and that's a specific area, and that's what zone coverage is, so... Ooh. Why don't you go ahead and explain some zone coverage, Jason? you're throwing this at me because you want to trap me, because you know that I am not as familiar with this as you are. (laughs) But you know what? I'll take the bait. I'll take the bait. Let's see it. Let's hear it. So zone coverage, as opposed to man coverage is what it sounds like. Man coverage, you have the uh, offensive player in front of you. You are locked on. That's your guy. Speaking from a defensive standpoint. And then uh, zone coverage is you are responsible for a portion of the field or a spot. And oftentimes that is in relation to where receivers are located and can change based on formations and structure of the offense. Very well put. There are different types of zones just like there's different types of man yeah okay there is a middle field open Ooh. which would be two safeties in the middle of the field is kind of uh that are splitting the halves of the field or quarters or quarters nice then uh you have middle field closed which would be a single high safety playing the zone uh in the middle of the field, deep part of the field. Middle field open coverages are typically forms of two or four, and there are combo coverages, which I will admit I am less uh, inclined to understand. And then there is your generic <laughs> cover three, which is a type of middle field closed. Uh, another type of middle field closed would be man coverage with a single high safety in the middle. Um, Travis. I think this is where you come in and nice. get more detailed than uh, what good. I was it's able pretty, to. Pretty, I'll give you. I'll give for uh, offensive oh, thank you, lineman. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. That's pretty damn good, man. Um, you could play for me any day, bud. <laughs> I uh, all right. So basically, your zone covers exactly what Jason said. You have a certain uh, area on the field, or you latch onto a specific guy if he comes through your zone. Right. It all switches. It all depends on what kind of or what style of defense you have, and uh, the the strategy that the defensive coordinator, you know, is teaching. And that switches in every single defensive room in the league. Um, yeah. Cover cover three doesn't look the same in every single defense. You know, there's certain rules um, that if I got into it would get extremely complicated, but extremely detailed cover three is, is exactly what it says. There's three people deep. Mm hmm. Cover one, there's one person deep, and everyone's trying to play outside leverage on their on a specific man and force them to the middle of the field. Cover two, typically you have uh, two high, right? There's mm-hmm. two high safeties. Cover four, there's four people deep. So it's really telling you how many people are the furthest back, and that actually tells you certain rules that the underneath guys have as well. Very, very nicely done, Jason. So there's some zones that I am unfamiliar with. Okay, let's talk about them. So like, what is cover six? I know it's some type of two and four combined, but I don't know what it is. It actually switches in every offense too. So how you label defenses switches in, like how you schematically label a defense uh, or your coaches label a defense 
is going to be different in every single offense. Like some some people say quarter quarter half is cover five. Some people say quarter quarter half is cover six. And a combo coverage like quarter quarter half is two cover two on one side and cover four on the other side. Right. And what that does is just presents certain uh, answers for teams if they go three by one uh, situations like that. Yeah. That's all I really got for you. So it was like quarter, quarter, half more based on offensive. Like, would that be like something where they, they'd call uh, cover four, but then because there's so many players to a certain area, they play cover two in the other side too, because there's less space over there maybe for one player. I think it, I think it all think just, it's called right away. I think it's called the, right away. Some okay. people just love to run, you know, cover two or cover four to a three by one. Um, a, even in a two by two and just give like certain blitz looks out of it. It can get pretty complicated, but at the end of the day, they call it, well, they call quarter, quarter, half because there's quarters. There's technically three safeties deep, but there's, yeah. if you look at, if you look at the middle of the field. Yeah. If you look at the middle of the field, all right, nice. If you look in the middle of the field, one half of the field is playing cover four and the other half of the field is playing cover two. So you, it'll look like there's three safeties deep, but you're really playing a combo coverage of a middle field open style defense. Yeah. Um, which typically presents all the underneath guys that have inside leverage except for the corner in cover two. Yeah. I don't know if any of this is helping you, fatty cat. <laughs> I hope we answered at least something. Yeah. I think the the bottom line is a lot of the zone coverage principles allow the defense to pass players off and sit in their areas and that or there are certain route uh, 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 combinations and oh my gosh, one of my concepts. Concepts, thank you. There are certain concepts that are good for different coverages, for zone or man. All of these things are called uh, usually with certain things in mind. And when the defense can make z- these zone coverages look as similar as other zone coverages, make them all look kind of the same, it presents uh, difficulties in trying to decide where players and defenders are going to be from a leverage standpoint. Good DCs make them all look the same, in my opinion. If you can make, if you can make your, your two, four, three, if you can start in the same presentation and get to it, that's when, that's when you really got something tricky going on in the back end. If you can hide it, man, it becomes tough. It's harder to do than it, than it, than it says. And if you got some players that are horses, uh, you can get compromised trying to hide it, but. It definitely it's it's harder when you don't know what it's going to be. That's for sure. Anything that as a defense, anything that you can do to s- just get the offense to be a tick off, because a lot of the offense is based off of timing. The quarterbacks drop when he has the has the ball in his hands. The uh, the timing of a, of a certain route and over under read. And there's so many different reads for the quarterback, but it's really based off of his timing is is a. Uh, what is it? His footwork, his feet, and um, and his progression throughout the play all have to match up and kind of be in sync um, to get the ball out on time. And if you can get an offense to kind of tick their feet or second guess, uh, that's when you got that's when you got something. Fatty Cat, I hope uh, that kind of explains zone and what these zones are. Yeah, Brian, um, we're gonna need you to clean that up too. We're gonna have a test here uh, for you coming up. All right, here we go. All right, now the next question is from. Lilil, I think I got that. Lilili, Lilili, 84. All right, on Instagram. What was the best school lunch uh, in your opinion? I'm going back to Dude. PB&J. That was, PB&J. I mean, that was the one that we had the most. Yeah. It's just, it's so complete as a sandwich. I said, have we talked about this already? I mean, I eat Uncrustable probably more than I eat anything have, else in the world. We, PB&J. We, I mean, okay. listen, uh, Uncrustable has been a fantastic invention that was not around when we were kids, but um, <laughs> we would have we would have been on board with that shit for sure. I mean, chicken nuggets can't you can't go wrong with chicken nuggets. Chicken nuggets? How are you having chicken nuggets? You're talking about hot lunch. The school is making it. Yeah, one hundred percent. What else? Pizza. Schools made pizza. Yeah, they made chicken few, nuggets. Uh, there's a few. Yeah, pizza bagels. I remember that Ooh, at Fairfax. Oh gosh, but it was an actual bagel. It wasn't like the little ones. I remember most. We got packed lunches a lot growing up. Yeah. 100%. Mom and dad definitely were packing lunches and acting like they were trying to be healthy, but it was not healthy. Gushers, fruit roll-up, that was, oh, God. 
God. You always got that one. How did there. how did the company, whoever makes fruit roll up, how did they convince moms across America that that was like a portion of fruit? Like that was like the fruit side of the lunch. I got yeah. my PB and J and my fruit roll it up. Set it my on the box. It, it yeah. set it on the box. Guaranteed. <laughs> like that is amazing. What's the Tommy Boy line? I don't know. <laughs> says, it says it on the box. <laughs> I want it on the box. It needs to reassure. Hey, look at me. I'm uh, all right. <laughs> no, the the tater biggest thing tots? about school lunch and yeah, for ooh, sure. tater tots are great. You can't go bad with those. So in at Cleveland Heights, we used to get open lunches where you could leave school premises. Uh well, actually that was before, and then uh we just kind of did it. We just kind of did it, yeah. And there was a Wendy's across the street. <sighs> I'm not kidding you. Every day. For about two years, junior bacon <laughs> like, cheese, dude. I, I junior had two bacon junior cheeseburger, ba- yeah. two junior bacon and cheeseburgers. We're on the dollar menu, man, in a five piece, yeah. man. This is five before the value the dollar menu. Too. It's all all the dollar. That's what I'm saying. It was two junior bacon cheeseburgers, uh, a medium fry, a frosty, frosty. You had to get the frosty, man, and two uh, nuggets. I think it was five piece, maybe it's six. I can't remember what the number count was. This on was that, every day, folks. Every day, and then every I would come day. into the lunch room. And, <laughs> and I would get a honey bun and a fruit punch fruitopia. Fruito- Fruitopias were undefeated in, in the Cleveland Heights University High School District. And that is how you build a world-class athlete, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> that was the uh, that was the best, man. Have you ever, did you ever get in any food fights at Heights? I did not. No? I've witnessed them. Dude, I was a fucking menace, dude. I was eating at Wendy's. I wasn't in the cafeteria very often. I was Early on, menace. freshman year, I was in the social room, in the in the lunchroom a little bit. But then after that, I was I was at Wendy's, though. I'm, uh, I got some karma, man. I got some bad karma coming my way, man. Did you start some lunch? Dude, I always, I, every fight, I would start a food fight. I would, every, <laughs> anytime I would see like a, a fist fight. Yeah, because everybody you see a fist fight, everybody gets up from the table and like runs over to like see who's fighting. Well, that means there's a bunch of trays with just <laughs> waiting to get tossed. <laughs> just throw an open milk carton, watch it splatter on, on, on the wall or something, and now all of a sudden everyone's throwing. Oh man, I ru- I definitely ruined some. I ruined some fucking some people's day for sure. I just like watching Mister. In all these situations, dude, Mister, we so can't Mr. name names. We those can't name names because he ended up getting he ended up getting canned because of that. I've seen a security guard at Heights who used to play arena football, play college football. The most <laughs> joked can't. individual I've ever seen in my life. Like he ran the entire building. Break up a fight as another fight's breaking out. Taking a guy, taking a kid to the office from uh, the cafeteria in the main hallway. Another fight breaks out that looks extremely un like out of control so he's like oh i gotta go like make sure nobody gets hurt right here tells the kid to stay put right there and you're listening no didn't listen as soon as he let him go <laughs> tried to jet out of there immediate it was you can't outrun Mr. it Bro. was so no it, sorry you can't this, outrun teacher x what? this <laughs> was one of the most impressive things i've ever seen in my life with no hesitation like it like a texas gunslinger Right off of the hip, takes the walkie-talkie and just Rose like it? Austin, like 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 the like the opening scene in Austin Powers when he has the shoe. The dude just fucking throws the shoe at a yeah. uh, dude. I'm talking about smack the dude in the back of the helmet or back of the head. Yeah, laying flat on the ground, out cold. He's out. Oh, well, this explains why cold. he might have got re- released, but. <laughs> High school at Cleveland Heights was one of the most lit experiences. But you need that. You need that. If if anybody who went to Cleveland Heights knows, we needed that man in that building. (laughs) That place would have been a a freaking jungle without that. Like There was no rules at times. People just pulling fire alarms, fights breaking out. It was crazy. It was chaos. You got to have security guards like that. And I'm I'm just going to tell you, there's few things that I enjoy more than watching somebody who is outstanding at their occupation. And I saw maybe more feats of physical excellence out of that man in his job than I've seen anybody else do. It was, I mean, he would leave. It was like, it was like he was a caged animal. He was just like waiting for kids to get out of line and he would jump over full on lunch tables. 
I mean, jump the table <laughs> to stop a fight happening on the other side. <laughs> it was so impressive. It was like I was. It was like we were it in an old so, western movie. Like, and uh, he was John Wayne, and it was like, hey, uh, dude, you're not starting super, any stuff, and Mister, if, if Mister is in the vicinity, super you ain't security starting guard. Nothing. You ain't, yeah, you <laughs> yeah, got Unless you got a death sentence, unless you want to get body slammed. But you kids need that. I'm telling you, you can't just let kids know that these security guards can't do nothing. You gotta stay in line, man. You gotta stay in line, dude. That shit. You were minding your p's and q's, around, Mister. I guarantee you that. <laughs> Stop saying his name, Jason. Hi, 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 hi. What I'm talking about, baby. Shout out to the Heights, man. It just reminded me of when every when they would go when kids started pulling the fire alarms because the kids wanted to go out in the street and fight each other in front of the whole school. Oh yeah, that was the best. It was Are you amazing. Me? That was like, and the the school was like, was like we're on to you guys. Next person to pull a fire alarm is expelled. And you're like, oh, man, that's going to stop people pulling the fire alarms. No chance. (laughs) Ain't stopping nothing. These kids would all huddle around. (laughs) They would huddle around in a big group around the thing. So you couldn't see who pulled it. Genius. And then right there on Cedar, one of the biggest streets in Cleveland just start brawling. It would be like people are just jumping out of trees. You don't realize who's... Who's on whose side, dude? That's do you remember, electric. Do you remember when we lost our best receiver? It was like the Coliseum, huh? Do you remember when we lost our best receiver because he was nervous about a test he had to take, so he called in a bomb threat to the school? <laughs> From the payphone. From the, the payphone inside the school. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, Shout really out. hurt us. Hey, listen, one of my favorite people of all time this is the to best. Day. Fastest this talking day. man I've ever been, been around, ever. Oh, my gosh. Still to this day. God damn, man. We really could have used him that year. Yeah, it would have been great. Yeah. I wasn't on that team, but you guys could have used him that year. Uh, all right. Thank you for taking a trip down uh, Old Heights High Lane with us. Um, <laughs> and that does it for No Dumb Questions, brought to you by Buffalo Wild Wings. Let's go, Sports Bar. Before we keep going, we need to shout out our sponsor. Shout Prize out. Prize Picks. Prize Picks is a skill based, real money daily fantasy sports game you heard the man prize picks is the most fun way to win money this football season i can't attest to it but i just heard (laughs) through the grapevine you just select two or more players pick more or less on their projected stats and place your entry that easy how about that all right well quick withdrawals easy gameplay and an enormous selection of players and stat types are what make prize picks the number one daily fantasy sports app and now for this portion of the ad read labeled personal experience to be read by talent outside of me and Jason because we're Ooh. NFL active NFL players and cannot participate, but you know who can? Intern okay. Brandon. Right well, on time. You're, actually, you're getting pretty good at popping in and out of this thing, man. Um, how'd you do last week, Brandon? Did you do our did you do the ninety percenters right? I did them half right. We were doing great, and then a certain offense said, Hey, what if we just don't give the ball to Isaiah Pacheco anymore? But I'm not pointing <laughs> fingers. I'm not pointing fingers. I mean, it's pretty good. I thought he was due for another four or five carries. Sounds great. Just you know, I like my guy. But that's fair. Your call. Yeah. Well, pops a hell of a fucking guy, man. If you can keep doing uh, right by our uh, listeners, intern Brandon, maybe you can become producer Brandon. Let's see what you got. (laughs) Listen, I'm every week. Every week, I load up the picks, and as that little bar of progress is moving, I get the text ready of like, (laughs) I'm fucking out of here, Jason Travis. And then each week, we come a little short. (laughs) <laughs> and we have to just unsend that one real quick. And, but God damn it, that's happening. One week, you're going to get it on Sunday at like 4 well, o'clock. This show will but be ruined. Get out of here so case. I can get some picks yeah. for this week. Right. Be, yeah. <laughs> we'll be done too. All right, guys. They're gone. Let's talk some picks for this week. Um, I'm going to be super quick with this. I really like Tyreek against the uh, Carolina Panthers for a anytime touchdown. I really like Travis against the different Broncos for a touchdown. I also would also look at Jalen Hurts for a rushing touchdown. I think that has been... Uh, a fairly reasonable take each week, but hey, you don't trust me, you don't trust me. We'll always post our picks on Instagram, but Price Picks has got a lot of options for you. You can go through passing yards, receiving yards, pass rush touchdowns. You can even do field goals like I did last week, even though I came up just a little bit short. So please check out Price Picks. Now let me get the guys back on the screen. Fellas, uh, we're doing phone time. Come on back. My time is up. Goodbye. All righty. Well, hopefully our intern did right by you guys. And uh, if you want to get into daily fantasy this season, go to prizepicks.com slash new heights and use the code new heights for a first deposit match up to a hundred dollars. How about that? That's prizepicks.com slash new heights code new heights for daily fantasy sports made easy. 
Shout out to another one of our sponsors, State Farm. State Farm helps you score an affordable price when you bundle home and auto with the personal price plan. You heard the man. The personal price plan lets you call the plays so you can choose the home and auto insurance coverage that fits your needs. That's right. At a price you can afford. And bundling home and auto, that's a pro move. And just another way to save with the State Farm personal price plan. So talk to your State Farm agent today to learn how you can bundle and save with the personal price plan. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. (laughs) Prices are based on rating plans that vary by state. Coverage options are selected by the customer. Availability, amount of discounts, and savings and eligibility vary by state. God damn, I love high school, man. It was great. It was much simpler times. So much fun. Golly. Well, I give to go back to playing handball in the backyard and you think playing in the NFL Suns is fun by kids? The box. Just no. Capri Suns. Mom would go out and get Capri Suns and we would just we would devour them by the end of the day. Yeah. There's no way those things ever stood chance. You think you want to play in the NFL, just know the height of your like fun playing sports is in the backyard hitting a ball with a hand. And if it hits above the second floor window, it's a home run. If it's below, it's a double. And if you don't get it to the house, it's an out. That's peak sports fun. So just <laughs> let know, let, let all you kids out there know get in the backyard it's and all make downhill up a, from here. I'm just get, letting you know. <laughs> get in the backyard and make up a fucking game, kids. All right, Please, no more, don't play no something more. that has rules. Make the rules yeah. up. Make them up, man. You got to get creative out here. Let's keep this thing fucking moving, man. Tee up some bold topics to wrap up week five in the NFL, starting off with both of our games. I'll start off with yours first. Jason Eagles 23, Rams 14. Moving on to 5-0. and oh. I'll take it. Initial thoughts on your first uh, trip to SoFi. Was, uh, did you feel the magnifying glass that was over no, top of No, I didn't. It, it wasn't hot. It was a good temperature with the, nice breezy. the sun coming through the uh, roof there. didn't really affect the... Anything. I thought it was really nice. nice. I, I wasn't it is a big a nice fan of the stadium. It's I very nice to look at. I wasn't a huge fan of the turf, um, but outside of that, I thought it was. I think the stadium's really freaking cool. Now, when you say you're not a huge fan of the turf, what is it that like? Was it you couldn't like get good footing or what? It felt it felt a little bouncy, which just kind of threw me off a little bit in warm ups. But by the time you're warmed up and playing, you're you're not noticing it. But yeah. Yeah, I think uh, overall the stadium experience was phenomenal, and I think part of that is uh, heightened by the fact that at least half of the fans are Eagles fans, and uh, that no. always makes it more fun at an away game. LA has pretty much been a home game for us too. Every time we go out there, a lot um, of transplants. Really cool stadium, and uh, you know, obviously Rams, an incredible team, and um, man, Aaron Donald. You know, we had a lot to uh, try and uh, get ready for. And it's always the most unique game plan we have is whenever we play Aaron because he's that good and you have to know how – you can't let him ruin the game. The game wrecker. You know, we had our hands full. So certainly um, happy with how the game went and uh, the end result for Darren Sure. Well, the Eagles – you were mentioning the Eagles, you know – being the uh, the home fan base out there in L.A. Jalen Carter said that they were so loud, the Rams actually had to adjust how they were snapping the ball. So they went from cadence to silent, which is for all you new uh, members to the 92 percenters. Typically, you'll hear a quarterback have a verbal cadence. Well, if it gets too loud, um, they'll go to signaling to the center when to snap the ball because they don't want to be off rhythm. Uh, with the snap count and everything. so uh, And that's a huge advantage to have uh, on the road. Yeah. Silent cadence, is it's got its benefits, but for the most part, it's a huge disadvantage, especially for the tackles who have to look all the way in and get a visual cue as to when the snap is happening, then look out. Sometimes they're sifting and doing multiple things. So they're looking here, then they're looking here, then they're trying to pass block uh, Jalen Carter or whoever it is. You know, it's it, it presents a lot of difficulties. Yeah. Testament to the Eagles fans that showed up and uh, made it uh, easy for the defense. Easier. Go Birds. There were also some Swifties among the Eagles fans in L.A. TikTok user Darvishi3 posted a video of Jason warming up with the caption, uh, Swifty here, I found a Kelsey. She had some uh, very funny analyzing of uh, Jason's warm-up. Let's take a look at this. 
calling some moves uh, the Crab Walk and uh, Happy Feet. Man, Happy okay. Feet's a good fucking movie. <laughs> are these the correct technical terms? I mean, this video is hilarious, man. Your feet are fucking moving, dude. <laughs> dude, I'm actually happy it looks this good because I feel like a jamoke when I'm doing this. How about this? Huh? What, what's the band? The band, you turning on some uh, You turning on some adductors with that band? I'm, I, I'm turning on uh, my knee, but my... Turn I want it, it at an knee. angle because I want to really isolate that VMO on the inside. Ooh, um, nice. And that was kind of hurting. So then we went to the straight nice. eye. Yeah. Getting that knee activated with the with the band and then doing a little pass setting footwork drill. Just getting my balance down and then just trying to activate that nervous system with some, uh, uh, I don't even know what the, what is that? What would you call the fast feet thing? I, I don't mean, like happy feet. I might feet, start dude. calling it happy feet now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you to Darvish. Thank you, Swifty. Darvishi. Darvishi. Darvishi 3. Just gave me a new name. The happy feet move. I feel like a jamoke when I'm doing that, but it's stuff that I feel like I got to do to get ready. <laughs> and I do not feel that fast. I'm pretty impressed with myself. I'm not going to lie. That was, yeah, those My feet, feet are, are moving, moving man. There. Those feet are moving, man. No, no I, I enjoyed watching that video. Thank you for get, capturing the, that moment. Let's keep this thing going. Apparently, uh, an Eagles fan also uh, snuck into the visiting locker room after the game and went up to AJ Brown. You, you, did you see him in the locker room? I didn't see this. No, I'm, I'm just now finding out about this, to be honest with you. AJ Brown joked uh, to reporters, I feared for my life. Which member in New Heights team was it? It had to be, it had to be probably, Brandon, right? It's probably it was one of our interns, either Brandon or Jake. It had to be Brandon. It had to be maybe Greg. Maybe. Oh, Greg is an Eagles fan, big Eagles fan from Lower Marion, I think I believe. Is that right, Greg? Right now, yeah, one hundred percent correct. What kind of shout out to Greg? Shout out to Lower Marion. Um, that's hilarious, and also, I mean, we got to tighten it up. We got to tighten it up. We can't just be letting <laughs> fans yeah, I don't, get I don't know how down that on the field into the tunnel and then yeah. in through the the doors i mean what are i don't know how this is happening but we got to probably snuck this in up. with the media guys i would assume i don't know that boy was trying to peter gaze peter gazer <laughs> what the fuck are you trying to go into a locker see those before, eyes man? dip down for a second hey how's no, it going no. you're doing all right right there oh, <laughs> <laughs> what just happened i've been violated oh man all right well offense is uh offense is clicking bud Jalen Hurts and A.J. Brown connection was huge for a second week in a row. Uh, Jalen finished the game with 303, 72 yards rushing and two tutties. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Led the team in rushing this week. Yeah. Yeah. And it wasn't him, all on called runs. He was making stuff. Our third downs, he was out of his mind on, in the game. He was playing unreal. Uh, not only was he throwing the ball, making good, quick decisions, but when things weren't there, he was making things happen with his feet. Um, kept a lot of drives together uh, on third down because of the dynamic player he is. Um, this one felt uh, uh, the best so far that we've put together, in my opinion. I mean, rushing-wise, it wasn't as dominant as we've had, but the, the entire offense, the structure of it, it all felt like the rhythm was there. And um, I think that, you know, the Rams uh, can present a lot of things from a defensive standpoint, as we just talked about Aaron. But across the board, they got good players. So, um you know, really, really happy with how we, we did offensively. Hell yeah. And we finally got my guy Dallas Goddard some receptions, man. Dude, I've been waiting for it. Eight receptions, 117 for a tutty. It's one of the biggest mismatches in the league. Can we get my guy? Yeah. I mean, you got a few good ones. I'm not going to lie. You got a few good mismatches, but. Well, you know how it goes sometimes. It just, for whatever reason, doesn't work out. And Yeah, he's just throwing to his best friend. You know, really, really happy that Dallas uh, finally got a game that's been coming for a long time with everything he does for our offense and the mismatches he presents. It's hard. You know, we have so many weapons. We have Dallas. We have Devontae. We have, uh, obviously, A.J. Brown. We have uh, DeAndre Swift. You know, everybody can't have 100 yards every game. And Well, I mean, you can. You just got to be flawless. <laughs> That's right. You got to right. be Miami Dolphins 70 to 25. Jesus. Then, uh, <laughs> then everybody, yeah, everybody's happy. Dallas does so, much th so many things for offense. Everybody was happy. His girlfriend, Aria, uh, Posted a video of him scoring his first touchdown for the season, and it, you could see that uh, her excitement. I can guarantee matched the entire team's excitement for Dallas getting on the board for the first time. So we were pumped up to watch that. I always get fired up for a t tight end touchdown, baby. You know what I mean? Just the most selfless players on the team. You know, never seen a tight end do a documentary about himself. Gosh! So the end about our family. You're video. in the documentary, huh? You're in the documentary. <laughs> 
<laughs> By the way, number one documentary of all time. How about it, huh? Did and you see that? For, How crazy is that? Bud, man. All pretty, because cool, of man. you and me. Doesn't have anything to do with this Taylor you Swift drama. Like that's it's what I'm not- saying, man. Everybody's just so <laughs> interested in the family dynamic. Yeah, um, I mean, I thought um, that was pretty cool, man. That's that's fun to hang your hat on that. So, if the, those of you that don't know, it's the uh, the most watched documentary ever on Amazon Prime Prime Video. Um, so, if you haven't watched it, go check it out, man. Kelsey, the documentary that uh, shows how selfish Jason is. <laughs> don't say. <laughs> It's just so fun, man. Uh, listen, I'm in there crying my, you know what I mean? Pouring my heart out for you, bud. I'm in there crying too. We're both crying. All right. I'm in there pouring my heart out. I can make jokes. Okay. Yeah, I know. It was fun. I'll I'll go watch it again and add more, add, add another watch to uh, add another uh, view to it. <laughs> but let's get back to AJ Brown leading the team and receiving for uh, right, six fair. for 127. But the highlight of AJ's performance was, we already know, baby Y a join enjoying some pink cleats uh breast cancer awareness month is it breast cancer it is, awareness? Yeah. yeah yeah that's what i thought so i think now it's only, they, it's only they, been doing it for my entire career well it used to be just breast cancer awareness now it's like multicolored, and it's called um uh oh my gosh what's the name they use for the month it's uh i knew it was something else it started with strictly breast cancer crucial catch now it's incumbent of like a bunch of different charities. There's basically a rainbow for it to uh, go with all of the charities. But yeah. uh, this was a throwback to when it was just breast cancer awareness. We used yeah. to get pink everything. Guys would only wear pink stuff. And oh, yeah. uh, that's, I think, why he chose the pink shoes. Well, we got a video of uh, what Kylie put out of Wyatt watching the Eagles game. And yeah. uh, she didn't miss those pink shoes one time. Oh, I see. I see the pink shoes again. I see AJ Brown shoes. Me too. I see him. Dude, I, I mean, dude, that's pretty cool. I, I didn't, I, the moment I saw the video, I uh, was immediately smiling. And I hope, uh, <laughs> She's so cute, man. I mean, it was adorable. And um, you want to talk about good advertising for AJ Brown. I mean, I, I firmly believe if you get a kid that is just like, you're, if you can maintain the attention of a child, you're doing something right. Like, the that kid, is yeah, hard to do. You're killing it. <laughs> right. Like kids are there, but every single time they showed him, she's like pink shoes, pink shoes. Everybody else in this adults are definitely saying the same thing. They just don't oh, say yeah, them on the camera. Know. I got to give me some pink shoes. There we go. Well, shout out to AJ Brown. Shout out to Baby Y for uh, putting a smile on everybody's face. The brotherly shove strikes again, ladies and gentlemen. For another week, one of the biggest storylines coming out of your game is the Eagles' dominance with the brotherly shove. The play that works every time, 92% of the time. 92% of the time, it works every time. Biggest shove of the game had to be during the uh, very last play of the first half yeah. uh, for a touchdown. Eagles were down 14-10 to 10 with 32 seconds left in the first half. You guys were able to drive down the field um, and put up seven points, man. Finding a way to go up at half. That's a good ball right there, baby. Right? Um, was there any conversation before the drive uh, about trying – to go for a field goal, or was it all just touchdown? I mean, you got 32 seconds. What are we really thinking is possible here? Yeah, I mean, when you have 32 seconds, first of all, whenever you're going into a two-minute drill, the goal is to just get points. Yeah, I, especially I, before half. Yeah. Before half. So 32 seconds, I think all of us were probably expecting uh, three points if we were going to get some. Um, and we just had a few big plays that uh, didn't – and we had all of our timeouts um, – and then the huge one at the end there with the defensive pass interference in the end zone that got us the ball on the one. And then once the ball is on the one, I mean, I think everybody in the stadium knew what was coming next. I mean, everybody did. Yeah. Did you tell them? Did you tell them? Because there's a I mean, few copies out there like, you know what's coming. I, I mean, uh, apparently other guys are doing it now, too. Dallas said in an interview that he's talking about it with guys pre-snap. And you don't need to tell them. I mean, they know what's coming. Everybody's in the same stance. Everybody knows what's about to happen. Um, I actually had, we should probably bring on, I had a good conversation with this with Brandon in the rundown because they were, New Heights team was actually at the game because they're LA based. All right now. And they were watching the game live. And he said that at every time there was the brotherly shove, he, the stands on both sides would, would erupt. Like it was like the biggest play in the stadium because all the Eagles fans are like huge fans of it. Everybody else hates it. And everybody's just like, it's, it's a pure adrenaline play. It's just, ah! 
Dude, it's the closest thing to like the old school kickoff. Like you yeah. just get just a barbaric like mentality of I got to fucking run through this just organized mass. Both teams are just going to mush against each other and whoever can mush the best is going to succeed for a yard. Um, and this one for a touchdown was huge. I, I got asked afterwards, you know, were you surprised you go for a touchdown on the one yard line and then just kick the field goal going into half? And I'm like, no, I think every, even if you're not a brotherly shove guy, don't you think most coaches are trying to, if you're on the one yard line, you're going I feel for like the touchdown. We got a play. Right? I, we got at least one play that can get us six one points, yard, seven. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. I think. We didn't even need the call play to come in. I think everybody's like, yep, suit up for this one. Make sure yeah. the pads are yeah. nice and situated. Oh, boy. Um, before the game, Adam Scheffner tweeted that the brotherly shove had been uh, in the attention of the NFL's uh, competition committee. The controversial play has the attention of the competition committee and the NFL and the NFL plan, NFLPA plan to study all the injury-related data to the play, as is customary during the offseason per a league official, especially after two Giants were injured on the play Monday night. The brotherly shove also will be topic of discussion during the offseason, as it was last offseason, but nothing will change this season. The brotherly shove is here to stay for 2023. I know that two Giants did get hurt last week. I will say, I've been watching quarterback sneaks for a while. Outside of Patrick Mahomes like injuring his kneecap, there really haven't been that many injuries on this play. Yeah. But if there's a way that this play is going to be outlawed, this is how it's going to be. This is it, yeah. Yeah. yeah and what I'm worried about is if I'm a defensive coach, any of these that I can like have a guy like go up limp on because I'm planning ahead for next year to try and stop offenses. I'm telling you, I swear, I guarantee guys are going to start faking injuries. It's going to start off minor injuries at first. But they're already thinking about how can we get this outlawed for next season? Because that's all they're doing. They're just complaining. And now guys are going to start faking injuries just like they fake injuries in situations to stop you from going bolt. And it's nonsense. It's not a, it's not a play that has been historically a higher injury uh, chance of prevalence. Well, we, we don't want to get you riled up because Sorry. you already did get riled up. You got riled up on the sideline. Oh, nice transition, Travis. We don't get yeah. you fired up, but we did see uh get a little hot. Do you want to talk about it? I mean, listen, yeah. I think our offense has been unbelievable uh, the last few weeks. We're really starting to find our identity. Everybody's starting to play well. Um, everything's gelling. The one thing that has been really frustrating has been the red zone offense. I think – I don't know what we're ranked. It's like something – I mean, we're bottom of the league. Just settling for uh, settling for field goals? Dude, we, so we – there's a stat out there where it's like, hey, Jake Elliott, at least going into this game, I don't know if it's still true after this past game with the Giants, but like Jake Elliott has outscored the Giants. And some people are like, hey, that's good. And I'm like, dude, if your kicker's kicking it that many times, it ain't good. Like, we're supposed to be getting in the end zone, dog. Like, field goals, we're lucky we have Jake Elliott. We wouldn't be 5-0 and without Jake Elliott. We got to get the red zone fixed. And... A number of things happened in the red zone this this past week. Communication issues. We had a delay a game. You know, multiple things build up, and you start getting frustrated. It, it all builds up, and um, you know me. I, you know, for me, I've always had an issue. Once I some everything builds up, and then you just let it out, and it's not the productive way to do it. And I gotta, yep. I can't do that. And it's, it's um, a Kelsey way, man. Yeah, but it's not it's not good and it's not productive and it's not respectful. And I think, you know, I I I mean this like with every fiber in my being. Like I love my teammates, my coaches, everybody in the Eagles organization like their family. I don't think I don't think that's under question by any means. Well, and I think that that's part of the reason why sometimes this happens. Like I don't get, you know, if a Starbucks lady messes my order up, uh I don't blow my gasket. You know, this tends to happen going, you ain't going, uh, uh, only Will in situations. Own, uh, for some reason, this has been the, my whole life. Kicking and screaming. Will yeah, this happens. And screaming, like, just, I'm just like, what do we my coffee? Know, yeah, and it, but it's not acceptable. And like, it, even if I'm not even offering anything of substance to improve it in the, in the moment, I'm just like letting out frustrations and airing out things that are frustrating that are killing us. And, you know, we want to be really good. And I know that we're five and zero, but you know, we could very easily not be five and zero. And 
the one glaring thing that we need to get fixed is the red zone. And it's, it's starting to become a major frustration for me, but I got to handle it better than this. And um, I think all of my other teammates are handling it better than this and being adults about the situation. I'm going to, I got to be better. I think, you're, uh, I think you're on your ass a little bit too much about this. Everybody everybody knows the kind of teammate you are and what kind of player you are. Um, and I think you're pretty well respected around that building. Um, but at the same time, that's why you're one of the leaders, man. You can step you can step away and see what it really looks like and uh, make the corrections, man. Just uh, just you know the answer to, to your red zone problems? What's that? Dallas Goddard. <laughs> You just got to keep fighting. He's the biggest mismatch in the red zone. Okay. Get my guy some fucking touches. But let's have some fun with it. There was uh, 92%ers all over Reddit uh, kind of making light of the situation. Uh, user Akirians, uh posted a video of you yelling and uh, with the caption, what was Jason freaking out about on the sidelines? Wrong answers only. So we're going to have some fun with that. Uh, Reggie Wigglesworth says Sirianni told him Travis was correct about straws only having one hole. <laughs> you just see him. You just see you getting fired up just talking about how many holes are in a fucking straw all over again. That'll get you fired up. <laughs> At Booger Flickin said, telling him about Twilight. I love it. Yeah, the whole series. Knowing that, knowing that again will get you fired up. <laughs> I'm out of here once you start talking about that shit, though. <laughs> At Team FYI. Someone said he belonged in Hufflepuff. Yeah. Classic. Oh. Yeah. That would get me that fired up because I'm not yeah. a fucking Hufflepuff. Appreciate the 92 percenters for shining some light on a situation like that. Keep this thing moving on to Hassan Reddick and Jalen Carter. Man, them dogs, bro. Mm. Them dogs on the D-line. Bro. Them boys are nice, man. Well, Hassan Reddick and Jalen Carter came uh, came ready to play after the really the first, uh, first two quarters. Um Giving up uh, two big touchdowns. The defense tightened things up uh, the rest of the game, shut them out, and only allowed 82 yards in the second half. That offense has been rolling, and they did get uh, their premier Cup player back. back in Cooper yeah. Cup. And we all know what Matty Stafford is capable of doing. So, dude, that's uh, hats off to the Eagles defense for keeping you guys in the game or at least giving you guys a great chance in the second half to come out with the dub. No doubt. Hassan Reddick closed out the game big way, third and 10. And then fourth and 12, uh, just minutes before uh, the fourth quarter, or just minutes left in the fourth quarter, Hassan Reddick sets, sacks Matthew Stafford on back-to-back plays. Hassan finally got like the cast off of his hand. He's been playing with a like a like something on his right hand, which I think, uh, I don't know if that factored in that much, but he certainly was there this, uh, this game against the Rams. Uh, Jalen Carter was, I mean, dude, all over. The place he's playing fucking lights out for a rookie man. Man, I, I'm not saying this just because he's my teammate. I have not seen this many rookie D tackles impact the game right away like he's doing. The quickness, that's a the huge speed. mother. That's he's got like a, a, a savviness a to him. That you just usually don't see in a young guy. Like he knows when we're in practice and guys are pulling. Like that's something that like most young players takes them a couple years to kind of evolve that vision to be like, okay, this guy, this offensive lineman looks a little off. I think he might be pulling and then he's quick to react and dude, he's a wild card. And um, li- I mean, I'm happy he's on our team. That's for dang sure. He's uh he is balling out and that's going to, you know, when one guy is causing that much havoc, it's going to open up everything else for everybody else. I mean, that's the way it goes. And um, with how many horses we got in the D line, Hey, have, have fun guys. <laughs> I'm happy we ain't got to do it. You guys had a LeBron stat of the game. Hey. So we're going to start to uh, mention every time there is a LeBron stat uh, for both our teams. Do you want to describe what a LeBron stat is? Oh, uh, yeah. LeBron stat is uh, these stats that are just insane numbers, and we're not sure what they really mean, <laughs> but they sound fucking awesome. Like yeah. uh, LeBron James had the most assists. Uh, before turning 21 years old with 1,193. Yeah, um, typically I feel like cool, they uh, That's cool. You know, under 21 years old, <laughs> before he could crazy. drink. Before he yeah. could drink, this is how many assists he had. I feel like typically it's a stat that ha- that's like a short time of, like a time frame, right? 
Like over the past three weeks, he has been Joe Montana. <laughs> like, <it's> like, <laughs> cool. <laughs> let's, let's get, let's, uh, why is the time horizon only that period? Just because you wanted the stat to say something. But anyways, yeah. All right. What, uh, what do we got? We got uh, LeBron stat of the Eagles game. Jalen Hurts is the first quarterback in NFL history to record 30 plus rushing TDs in their first 50 career games. <laughs> Why? Fucking yeah. mind blowing stat. Pretty fucking sweet. He's got 30 rushing touchdowns. I wonder touchdowns if he's going to have the most games. rushing touchdowns in his first 51 games and then his <sighs> first 52 games. Ooh. At what point does the. We will, it's just we will very wait and odd. see. We will These wait and arbitrary see. Arbitrary times. But I guess all that means is that Jalen Hurts is pretty good to get in the end zone. So. Dagon. Yeah, I'll take that LeBron stat any day, baby. Trav. Hey, man. Fall is here. I love that. That means one thing. What's that? It's time to break out our favorite jeans, T-shirts, sweatshirts from True Classic. Ooh, and right. with the football season in full swing, there's nothing better than watching a game in these ultra-comfortable, perfect-fitting essentials. Look at you, you little fashionista. Yeah. I don't I even know you were into, into fabrics and comfortable jeans while you're sitting oh, on the couch. I am. I am. We all know it's hard to find a perfectly fitted, ultra comfortable shirt, especially uh, one made with premium fabrics that just help you look and feel great anytime, anywhere. But True Classics, trust me, they got you covered. For a limited time, True Classics is giving listeners 25% off their first purchase at trueclassics.com with offer code New Heights. True Classics completely re-engineered how t-shirts fit, creating a looser fit in the gut and tighter fit around the arms and shoulders, which is perfect for Jason's awkward body shape. Hey, The fabric feels like butter, man. God damn, the fabric feels like butter Ooh. and makes for a comfortable base layer on a chilly day. I'm sold. Well, the best part is that this is a truly premium product offered at an affordable price, and you can buy it in bulk. Check out their three, six, and nine packs for extra savings. Plus, in addition to their tees, you can also get their comfort jeans with four-way Ooh. stretch. I and their uh, their hoodies and crews will become your uh, your go to for casual Fridays. I'm telling you, game days, uh, trips to the gym, yeah, you name it. Seriously, whatever you choose, you can't go wrong with True Classic. All of their clothing is designed to be versatile and work with your lifestyle, so you can look and feel your best all damn day. So if you're ready to make the easiest summer upgrade, shop now at TrueClassicTees.com and save 25 percent off with the code New Heights. Hey, nice. This fall. Step into a world of style and comfort with True Classic. We have some great news, 92 percenters. What's that, Travis? For a limited time, Hot Barbecue is back at Buffalo Whoa. Loud Wings. Why didn't anybody tell me? This is why I'm telling you, because I knew oh, you'd okay. get excited. <laughs> this is incredible. For those of you who don't already know and didn't uh, have knowledge of this, B-Dubs took Hot Barbecue off the menu in 2019. And fans like me have been asking to bring favorite. it back ever since. Yeah. Well, really demanding that they bring it back. It's been all over the internet, Trev. And I understand why. The sauce is a classic. Smoky, sweet barbecue with a <laughs> little spicy heat. Ooh. Yeah, it's absolutely delicious. So make sure you uh, check it out. Yeah. No, I'm uh, I'm pumped. I'm uh, Who doesn't love a good hot barbecue? Golly. Listen, I like hot sauce. I like barbecue. So I'm going to like hot barbecue. <laughs> That's just how it goes, right? <laughs> but remember, 92 percenters, it's only back for a limited time. So go try hot barbecue at Buffalo Wild Wings or order some hot barbecue wings at buffalowildwings.com while you still can. Again, hot barbecue is only available for a limited time. While supplies last. Let's get to, um, I don't know, the frozen north. Soda, eh? Where the Chiefs took on the Vikings. It's not... Is it is it that cold up there yet? What was the temperature like up in Minnesota? No, it was actually really nice. They uh they opened up the uh they opened up the the doors. Oh, cool. So it was kind of like it was an outside venue. And um I'll tell you what, man. Beautiful stadium, Hats right? Hats off, man. Hats yeah. off. That thing. I hadn't seen it like in daylight and you just I mean it is a beautiful stadium. Yeah, they did a good job with one that. One of my favorites I've played in, in a long time and of course uh the Skull Nation all the everybody over there Minnesota's fan base was absolutely electric. Um Chiefs Kingdom showed up yet again uh as they always do and um yeah it was rowdy in that thing. It was a rowdy afternoon uh in a, in a in a competitive game man. I got a lot of respect for not only the fan base but 
everybody over there playing for the Vikings, man, uh, coaches included. Well, let's start with this because you just brought up how much you love the stadium. I'm surprised you're saying that because early on you went down with a non-contact injury and a lot of fuss has been brought back up around yeah. turfs and stadiums. You know, I didn't find out about it till after the game because we were playing at the same time and somebody was asked if you were all right. And I was like, my brother's hurt. I didn't even know my brother's hurt. But I watched the play. Um, it looked like you just tried to cut right after making the cut catch. You're looking to cut back up inside. And did your ankle get caught in the turf or did it roll? Yeah, it rolled. I, I I rolled my ankle. It was like a basketball, like you're coming down off a rebound and you just roll your ankle. Yeah. it's It was unfortunate. If you watch it in slow motion, my, my ankle kind of slips for a couple of inches and then it finally grabs on the turf. And that's been the knock is that when it when you do slip, you don't just slip right through the, gla- the, the grass. You kind of like slip, slip and then you have grabs. that. And then it grabs. And when it grabs, you're, your, I don't know, your Not joints and- Yeah, you're just not ready for it. But I'm just out here just being old as fuck and just offing myself (laughs) because nobody has. I'm not getting tackled and getting injured like nobody's doing this to me, but me. And I just feel like a fucking jamoke and a grandpa every single time I go out there and just injure myself. So that's what the majority of my frustration was. Initially, felt a few things going on in my ankle that I didn't feel great. Really? Yeah, that's why when I when I first rolled it, um, I got right off the field and I I really couldn't put much weight on it. So I knew I had to at least see if it was broken. Uh, went in, got X rays, and from there uh, knew that there was nothing structurally wrong with it. Uh, so I could just tape that thing up and get back out there. Does it change at all with because it rolled? It was like a low ankle roll. Where where you got you got to know you got to know the terrain or you got to know the surface that you're playing on, man. Okay. I got to go in with a base with a more athletic position. I kind of just got lackadaisical, tried to let my my you know, I what I think is an athletic move uh later on in my career just is an athletic move. I got to I got to play with a base. I got to play with my feet underneath me. Um and the rest of the game I did that. And uh you didn't see me slip around or or you know, injure myself at all. So I just, uh, when you're playing on turf like that, you just got to have a little bit more awareness and how you're putting your feet in the ground and how you're changing direction. Um, and that's, it's just an unfortunate part of the game, man. Did you, uh, did you spat? Is that, did you just kind of tape it up? Spat extra it up. Yeah. Taped the yeah. ankle and then taped it, taped over the shoe for sure. Just kind of limited the, uh, the flexion. I didn't get the update from Jay Glazer the way I have been, who's been very, Keen on giving Travis Kelsey updates because I actually saw him out in LA uh, the day before the game. Shout out to Jay. Good to see He's you, LA guy. Yeah. But you just talked about the turf, and we're going to talk about it right now. Uh, the internet was quick to blame this whole thing on the slit film turf that is uh, on the field at US Bank. For some context to everybody who has not been privy to a lot of these turf issues that have been being debated, ESPN Vikings reporter Kevin Seifert, Seifert, sorry, Kevin Seifert. Uh, tweeted, uh, U.S. Bank Stadium has slip film turf, which NFL, NFLPA data shows has had a higher rate of non-contact lower extremity injuries than other types of turf. The surface here is uh, slated to be replaced after this current season. Can we explain the differences of playing on turf, grass, uh, different types of turf? Here's my my theory. My theory on any turf is that it's there's black pellets, and when your cleat is on top of turf, mm-hmm. you don't really get that natural like you're digging into the ground. It kind of just grabs on top of the turf. Yep. Uh, your cleats kind of just grab on top of the turf, and it's almost if you have too many black pellets, it kind of feels like you're on stilts a little bit, Dude, or at least like I an unstable stand. surface. When there's too many black pellets, that's where it gets kind of yeah. That's where it gets kind of iffy for me because the more unstable it is, and the more you throw your feet in the ground, that's not a good equation, you know. So I'm glad you're bringing this up. Have you ever noticed the difference between a slip film turf, a monofilament turf, a combination turf? Like when you go out on the turf, can you be like, "Oh, this is a slip film turf"? No, because I can't. Right. I don't know what the difference. All of this attention is, in my opinion, is being applied to slip film turf. Just get rid of the turf. I don't care if it's slip film, monofilament, combo. I don't give a crap because there's so many factors in this. Like you said, the thing that I notice the most is when there's a, a, a like a disproportionate amount of rubber pellets. Yeah. When there's too many rubber pellets, it almost feels like you're in sand a little bit. Like it's like uh, it, it feels weird. 
puts a little bit more strain. And even if it's just the most minimal amount of strain, it, it's still putting more strain on the joints for sure. And this is my problem with everybody only going after slip film or just saying slip film, because now all these teams are going to do is going to go to a different type of turf. We need to get rid of turf altogether. And I don't want to yeah. hear it like it's an indoor stadium. They make UV lights. You can go grass inside. There's a freaking pot barns right down the street that are going mountains of fucking pot. We can grow grass indoors. All right. I don't want to hear this nonsense. It's not necessary. There's so many things that factor into what makes the turf good or bad. The slip film is part of it. Yeah. Slip film, monofilm, maybe that's a factor. How many rubber pellets are in it? Who installs it? There's better, a hey, newsflash. Some people install turf better than other people. Uh, there's different underneath that it's woven into. There's different underneath surfaces beneath that. Like there's so many factors that can go into whether the turf is going to be good or bad, how it's maintained, right? From year to year. Just stop it. We went through this with AstroTurf back in the day. It ruined guys' careers. Now we're seeing the same thing with this turf. Yeah. All right? And it's only going to continue to happen. Just go back to the grass. Get your UV lights. I don't care if it's Ford Field. You can put a yeah, put some dirt on the ground, put some grass on there, UV lights. You're going to fucking have grass. Well said. I got to play MetLife this week, so that's partly why I'm upset as well. Although I did hear that they switched from slip film turf, so I guess we're all good. <laughs> God, it's so fucking stupid. Well played. I mean, it's so dumb. I am, gosh. I think you fucking killed it. Did I do too much? Is the NFL going to hate me now? I don't know what no. to say. I think you're you're we a added a few. We added a few uh, clicks to the swear jar, so at least we're helping a kid go to college yeah. off of that. You're winning. Yeah, you're winning. <laughs> you're winning the swear jar right now for sure. All righty, we can keep it moving. Trav touchdown. Yeah, finally got in the end zone. You got in there, baby. Yeah. After the injury. It felt good, yeah. Yeah, walk us through it, man. Second half, um, it looked like a pretty cool concept. You guys like were in like a little bunch formation. You 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 kind of a little misdirection. Caught him in zone. Confusion. Caught him in zone. Is that what yeah. that was? Caught him in zone in the red zone. Dude, we're stealing it. Watch out, Jets. Yeah. I shouldn't say this. Brandon cut it. Brandon cut it. It looked like a, some some sort of uh, middle field open. So it was like a red, uh, we call that red two in the red zone, where it's Ooh, like a okay. specific middle field open, almost like uh, kind of like brackets. No, way different than brackets. Brackets has no deep. Yeah, way different. Way different than brackets. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, I'm going to shut up now. No, you're good. You're good. Um, <laughs> essentially, essentially, we had uh, we had a tick on what they like to run, and um, we've ran that play a million times uh before so it was just kind of one of our go-tos and uh we have a bunch of plays that we run off of that so just when you think you got us <laughs> another touchdown for uh, el trevador how about that that put us up two scores man in the third quarter going into um i don't i have nothing else for you all right well on the drive you had five receptions throughout before you scored the touchdown with 45 yards. Were you tired coming off of that field? You had to be pretty tired getting five receptions in the touchdown. I mean, that was a long drive. That was a long yeah. drive. I don't know how many plays it was. I think it was over 10. There were a few wow. third down conversions, Ooh. a controversial third down conversion that uh, Vikings head coach was uh, through the re the challenge flag for, and I was uh, thankful and um, lucky enough that they called that a catch instead of an interception. It would have been really bad if they would have called that interception but i felt like i had possession of the ball going down and slit was sliding around on the uh on the grass for a minute there and then he took it out of my hand so i think so they called down. me down gotcha yeah they called me down and it got me the first down on a third down conversion so nice um kept the drive alive but running around man just trying to find a way is it more significant coming back from an injury and then having a bunch of like i don't know a really great drive like that i think it does just you know, you feel like more like you're going through more. It's a new challenge. It's more exciting uh, when you kind of are more relieving when you when you're having success, knowing that you're going through something uh, without a doubt, man. After your touchdown, the Vikings scored on their next drive, but the chief sh uh, defense shut them out the rest of the game. Man, our defense is playing great, man. Yeah, man, they are on the Vikings final drive. Uh, the last play of the game, the Big Yeti's out there. We've oh, talked yeah. about it before. Uh, a little Rob Gonkowski edition. Whenever no, you're expecting don't, jump you don't ball, have to, you don't sorry. have to fucking do Rob like that. I know man. you're right. You're right. That's like my worst nightmare is being one on one with somebody. It take me. <laughs> 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 gotta make. 
talking about obviously the well, you got to do something you practice zero zero of for the yeah, last I've decade. Never, I haven't tried to tackle anybody, even though I do have one tackle in a year. Me trying to tackle anybody is not the situation that we want to be in. But me going up for a football, I can pretty help familiar out. with that one. I yeah. can help out with that one. What a lot of defenses will do in last game hail mary uh, situations is they'll put their tallest, best jumping player best reach player out there. I don't know if that's even me at this point. I think they just put me out there because I'm kind of savvy. <laughs> They're like, trying to figure it out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we don't know I, if you can I jump trust, anymore, but he'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah. Spags is just like, I trust you're going to do. You're going to figure it out. But yeah, I was waiting for it, man. I was waiting for it. And Kurt just got gobbled up by my guy, Mike Dana, man. Yeah, man. I was waiting for that freaking ball. I was definitely going for the interception. Did you know? You were going to go out there? Is that like you guys rep that a lot, I'm assuming, right? I mean, yeah. Everybody has that package of uh, of kind of like that last play situation where they put uh, they put somebody else back there. Usually, typically, like you said, like a taller, uh, lengthy uh, player, somebody with some length to them. When you're out there for that play, are you thinking of it through like how the offense teaches it? Because I feel like that play 100%. is all the guy, taught the, the same now. Jump ball, like, jump one ball guy, guy, behind, guy in the one back, guy in front. guy in the front. 1,000%. Yeah, right. So yeah. where do you hit it? You hit it to the side. Just, every dude, time. don't give it away. Now they're going to put a guy to the side. <laughs> you can't, listen, it doesn't. I'm so, so savvy. I'm going to fucking hit it to the I'm other side. see the ball throw, and I'm going to look and see where everybody is, and I'm going to yeah. hit it to where they're where they're not. And you make it sound so simple. Like a, it's like a volleyball guy. Like, you're playing volleyball. Like, I'm not going to hit it at somebody. I'm going to hit it to Did the open spot. Did you ever play volleyball? No, but I'm a Just getting your I'm misty mail on? Yeah. I'm a gamer. Right. You know this. Listen, I do know any this. team activity, <laughs> you, won't, you want a Kelsey on your team. <laughs> All right? We will not let you down. Well, the Chiefs' D didn't let you down. They finished the game with three sacks and a fumble recovery. Our guy, oh, Chris yeah. Jones, uh, if you haven't checked out that uh, episode, you're going to want to check that one out. Not right now. On a four-game streak now with a sack, he has four and a half on the season. Uh, despite no training camp. Furthermore, uh, cementing that our PA should be fighting for no training camp. <laughs> and safety Justin Reed had seven tackles with one forced fumble. Jay Reed, baby, out there just being havoc, man. Two guys I just love playing with, man. Those guys are – love to have those guys on my side, man. Both of them are playing lights out as well as the entire defense. And, uh, yeah, once we start putting up points, uh, like you said – you score touchdowns with good defenses, man. That uh, That's quite the advantage to have right there. So I, I'm with you, man. Uh, just like you guys said, uh, just like you said, you guys got to start putting up touchdowns. Yeah. I think it's about time uh, the Eagle, Eagles and Chiefs both start just running it up, baby. I think that would be uh, pretty good. Until we see you. Pretty, pretty, pretty good. And then it's on like Donkey Kong, motherfucker. LeBron's stat of the game with the win over the Vikings. Pat Mahomes has now defeated every team in the NFL except the Chiefs. Check out you know LeBron's LeBron stat. stat. This is LeBron's actually... stat. Pat is now the 10th quarterback to defeat every team in the NFL except one. 31 teams. The only quarterbacks that have defeated all 32 teams Obviously need to be uh, perennial players that also defeated their original team. And that list consists of Tom Brady, mm. Peyton Manning, Ooh. Drew Brees, Damn. and Brett Favre. That's good company right there. Well, I'll tell you what. I think I speak for uh, Travis and everybody watching this show, at least that's a Chiefs fan, and that they hope he never joins that company right there. Let's hope that Pat never has to beat the Chiefs to join those four quarterbacks. <laughs> That would not be good for uh, Chiefs yeah. Kingdom. Shit, man, I'm with that. All right, now it's time to shout out another one of our sponsors, Dr. Hey. Teals. That's right. Ooh. It's game time, Jason, and we know better than anybody that that means high-impact action on the field all season long. We've talked about it on the show. You guys know that we are big on post- and pre-game routines, but did you know that football pros across the NFL, like Garrett Wilson and Derrick Henry, rely on Dr. Teal's Pure Epsom Salts for post-game recovery? I didn't know that. but um, Didn't. You do now. Those guys doing them after every game. Yeah, no, they. I mean, they're doing pretty good. All right, now. Soaking in Dr. Teal's Epsom Salt is the secret weapon to your recovery and routine. Trusted by the pros who push their body to the limits week in, week out. Dr. Teal's recharges muscles and helps speed recovery so you can feel your best. It's time to work hard and recover just like the pros do. Grab Dr. Teal's Epsom Salt Soaks today and elevate your game. Again, go ahead. Try soaking in Dr. Teal's to recharge your muscles and help speed recovery 
So you can go even harder tomorrow. All the 92 percenters out there tuning in. You can find Dr. Teal's Epsom Salts at Walmart. All righty, before we keep going, we got to let you know about something new and unexpected from our friends at Experian. It's the all-new Experian Smart Money Debit Card and digital checking account that helps you build credit without the debt. How's that possible? All right. So basically, (laughs) all it does is use the monthly payments you're already making, like utilities, whatever streaming of services you're using, or even rent to raise your credit scores. I mean, that makes sense. I don't know why that wouldn't raise your credit score. I don't understand why banks haven't done this sooner. And because it's a debit card, it won't get you into debt. That's right. How nice is that? It's a debit card and checking account, not a credit card. I'm not going to lie. I really wish I had this back uh, when I was in college. Yeah, my credit wouldn't be that bad. The craziest thing was when I was getting paid by the NFL, my credit score was nothing because I had never had a credit card. Yeah. And it was beyond infuriating that I couldn't get loans yeah. out, even though I would always pay. I would always pay. Uh, Kelsey always pays his debts. Travis Kelsey never pays his utilities. So I came out with an atrocious <laughs> credit <laughs> score, knowing that I still had to pay Cincinnati Bell for the energy and yeah. a whole bunch of cable companies. Experian is the credit expert. So get the Experian smart money debit card and digital check. Checking account at Experian.com slash Kelsey. Again, get your Experian smart money debit card and digital checking account. Go to Experian.com slash Kelsey or download the app for free. Experian is not a bank. Experian boost results will vary. See terms at Experian.com slash legal. We're not lawyers, folks. Player insights on NFL storylines. We're going to talk about some other things that happen across the league in week five. Week five roundup. Let's give some quick thoughts into the biggest headlines from this past week of NFL football. The Jets beat the Broncos 31-21 in the Nathaniel Hackett Bowl. Uh, Jets named offensive coordinator uh, Hackett their fourth captain for the uh, game on the Friday, which I thought was awesome. Uh, Hackett was also given the game ball after the win. Did he go off with the coin flip? Gosh, that's a good question. Let's see what this picture looks like. Nope, it's just a picture of Nathaniel Hackett. Um, I don't know if he went off with the coin flip. That would be electric. I don't think he can. I think you can like name him the captain, but I don't think you're allowed to actually send a coach out there for the coin flip. But that'd be electric if they did. Well, a lot a drama, drama packed game, man. Very drama packed game. Obviously, obviously, knowing about what Sean Payton said. It was heightened uh, this offseason with uh, Broncos head coach Sean Payton uh, when he called out Hackett in July, the former head coach of Denver before Sean Payton was hired. Uh, Payton took shots at Hackett, saying his team, his time in Denver was one of the worst coaching jobs in NFL history. Uh, everything I heard about last season, we're doing the opposite. I play him this week. This is why you don't say stuff like that. And, and to Sean's credit, he tried to walk it back afterwards. You know, he tried it, but, it, you know, I can guarantee that was brought up this week uh, with the New York Jets. There's no doubt about that. What, well, I mean, they made him, they made, Nathaniel. they made him the captain. <laughs> yeah. So it was. Do you think, um, do people underestimate the power of locker room material? All right. Bullets and board material, baby. Yeah. I think it's big. Anything, anything to get the juices going. I play a little bit when I'm playing for something else, like more than just wins and losses. I'm playing for a little bit more like pride and playing for my guy next to me's, you know, job and livelihood, knowing that this guy's given everything that he's got. Hell yeah. I'm fucking using that. I'm using that every bit of that. Sometimes I start digging for shit just to, you know, in my mind, you know, create that monster or, or create that, that, that aggression or that focus and that determined, you know, mindset to go into a game with you know it's the i feel like I, when i'm playing my worst i'm just kind of out there just playing for the fun of the game like when i have when i have an aggressive mindset to get something done yeah uh, and play a little bit more like there's more on the line 100 percent. there's something that happens when you when you're really either angry or like you're you, it like gets your your senses going it like it like fires you up sometimes you just got to like artificially get that going and sometimes it's hard to get going artificially so when a team gives you a gift like this where you're like yeah oh yeah okay it's on now i think it does make a difference and i don't know you know how many players were affected by this but just in general yes i do think locker room material matters i think that uh i think that people uh use that to their advantage for sure do you ever give anybody any bulletin board material i try not to and i don't I, and it's genuine i don't want to you know i don't really hate on nobody anyways 
Yeah. Um, I think the I, what I did wasn't necessarily bro- bullets and board material, but I did. I barked up the wrong tree one time. What's that? <laughs> Playoff you- game against uh, Tom Brady. Uh, Ooh. 2015, I think. Yeah. You know how Tom Brady kind of runs down to the other side of the field and gets everybody hype in pregame warmups? No, I didn't know that. I mocked him a little bit. Uh, he does it in Gillette Stadium. I mocked him a little bit. Oh. And um, I could see him go from like getting hype with the fans to looking at me and just like turning that switch on. Just like, who the fuck is this young dude? Mocking me right now, and I was just yeah. like, oh, shit, I hope I, didn't, I just create a beast for the do? defense. I don't even got to go up against him. Just poke the and, bear. Uh, yeah, I just poked the bear, and I felt it. I felt well, it when I poked him. Sorry about that, Chiefs Kingdom. It's not a guy you want to amp up. That's not the guy you want to poke. Yeah, I learned that. I learned that lesson. I learned that lesson real quick. Yeah, I think we had one with the Patriots, too. That we Shout out to it, Tom. I never it's did on it the, uh, It's on the Julian Edelman episode, but uh, we talked about it a little bit after the game when we won – uh, Super Bowl 52, Lane Johnson uh, had a quote, uh, and I actually said something too, I think, but either way, we played them two years after that, and you could tell they were still thinking about it, and we knew some guys on the team that said Bill brought it up the following season, and after the game, what Lane had said was, you know, I think, um, you know, they don't have fun in New England, you know, I, I think it's all about something like that to the, that extent, and Bill had the most perfect press game response uh, press conference response after the game where he said, uh, um, that was fun. Yeah. We had a lot of fun out there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so got a hats off to, to the man himself, Bill Belichick. All right. Moving on. Dolphins beat the Giants 31 16 on Sunday. Coach Mike McDaniel was given the stat that the Dolphins had more yards than any team in history through five games. The good old LeBron stat. This was Mike's response. Mission accomplished. Our whole goal this entire offseason was statistical output through the first five games. Well, well said, played. Mike. Gosh, well said. He's, I mean, he's clever. Clever guy, man. He gets he it. Yeah. He gets it. Yeah. And shout out to the shout out to the Dolphins, man. I tell you what, they got speed. They're rolling, brother. They are rolling. They got a bunch of speed over there, man. Bunch of speed. 49ers beat the Cowboys 42-10 in a dominating performance on Sunday night football. The 15th straight regular season win for the 49ers. Uh, 49ers and Eagles are now the only 5-0 teams in the NFL. Not right now. One of the highlights from the game of the 49ers was a 38-yard George Kittle touchdown that came off a trick Kittle. play. Oh, yeah. That's right. That was identical to a play the Lions ran earlier in their win over the Panthers, it looked like La it was like Porta. a. We mentioned Sam was Laporta a reverse pass, of our, uh, right? Yeah, one yeah, of man. our first, yeah. and both Hawkeye guys, Laporta being a Hawkeye rookie out of Iowa. Yeah, both uh, both Hawkeyes, man. Hey yo, there's something about them uh, Hawkeyes tight ends, man. And uh, finally getting my guy George some tutties, man. The guy's out here just being an absolute f- workhorse for that offense, just being selfless and blocking for everybody and getting everybody else open. Thank you. Kyle Shanahan for letting my guy get a piece get a piece of the pie and get in there and have some have some fun in the end zone. Yeah, three of them things. And uh, I think Sam Laporte's a Hawkeye guy. He I think he had two. I think he had two tutties. Hey man, well that's a that's a tight end snack if I've ever heard one. Not right now. All righty. In other terrifying news around the league, a Jags fan uh, at the Jaguars Bills game in London was dressed from head to toe like an actual Jaguar in a suit. The entire Ooh. face and uh, makeup, and it looks like he had a like an, an exact like he had like the nose and yeah. This is was, pretty uh, lifelike. It was. I mean, it's it's he, impressive. He, he did. He kind of overdid it, right? One hundred percent. But that's what they do over there in London, man. They sell. They they go full throttle. They just do it with a suit on. You know, we put like <laughs> spikes on shoulder pads and shit like that in America. Yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah, this was a more sophisticated uh, dress up. Yeah. Or dress as? Dress as, for sure. Well played, though. I mean, that's what you want. You want a genuine crowd. And they uh, they were, that was, that, I mean, that screams London 100%. Yeah, Jags play over there all the time, so they get a lot of love over there. And it's they found the a way to get a win. Bit, yeah. Found a way to get a win. Jags 25 20. Over the Bills. Stayed over in London after the game the week before against the Falcons. The Bills didn't get into London until Friday morning before the game. Um, how much do you think this impacts the game? Nothing. At right? All. It's the same nope. as us going to L.A. to go play the Rams last week. Like, it's all, Yeah. 
It, I don't think – I think if you want to win a football game, it doesn't matter when or where the game's played, you, mm-hmm. you're you going to get up and get after it. You're going to fucking find a way to win the game. Excuse my language in my potty mouth. Add it to the scholarship fund. Here we go. There we go. You're just going to find – you're going to find a way to dig deep. It doesn't matter if you're uncomfortable. It doesn't matter if you're, you know – not feeling great, you want a little extra sleep, you're, you're going to put all that aside and you're going to find a way to get a win. Now, the Bills, uh, they they got hit with some unfortunate uh, injuries and that, uh, that that's always disturbing, man, because um, you never like to see guys go down, let alone uh, great players, uh, guys you respect and things like that. Hopefully those aren't season-ending injuries. I haven't seen anything on – a lot of the uh, a lot of a lot of the diagnosis, but um, yeah, yeah, that hurt. And it, when you have big time players and key players and starters go down like the Bills did, it's it's hard to win a football game, man. Let me tell you, in particular, their nose guard Daquan Jones has been having an unbelievable season. I know I played against him in Carolina and felt firsthand that this guy had uh, was was a really really good player, and he was having a breakout year. Um, really unfortunate to go down. Damn. So yeah, I think. Uh, you know, there was another question, I think, is, you know, is it weird that the Bills got in so late for this game? And I think, I don't know if you feel the same way, but this seems to be the trend now. The trend when you're going far distance is to actually leave later to be affected Don't let less. your body Like, you don't have enough to time it. to be affected by the time change. Mm-hmm. We left later to go to L.A. as well. It was our latest time arriving. I think we arrived 6.30 uh, Pacific Standard Time. Is that the right name of that time zone anyways um, no idea either way that's definitely the uh sports science um and the circadian rhythms seem to back leaving later on long trips for whatever reason yeah so i'm with the bills on that one well that wraps it up uh and does it for week five roundup let's uh let's end this thing with some uh stamps of the week baby Ooh, should we hand out some stamps of the week to the guys who took their game to new heights in week five of the nfl season how about that new Heights stamp of the week is sponsored by state farm (laughs) like a good good neighbor. neighbor talk to state farm agent today to learn how you can bundle and save with the personal price plan that's right like a good neighbor state farm is there that's good i'm, Thanks, I'm done trying to we got to practice Harmonize this before we do me. yeah we got to practice yeah, this we got to do it in person too it's that's way true easier the timing person. is way off on the feed my stamp of the week uh for week five is going to be saints tight end foster moreau Ooh, okay an absolute warrior F- scored his first touchdown since overcoming hotskins lymphoma in a saints win over the patriots this week Ooh, foster man that's awesome. Got all the love in the world for you, brother, and what you've been been able to overcome. And um, we know it wasn't easy uh, being diagnosed with cancer earlier this year. Stepped away from football for just a bit and then signed with the Saints in May after treatment and um, already back on the field scoring tutties, baby. Let's fucking go. Let's fucking go. I am uh, couldn't be happier for you, man. And uh, keep that train rolling, baby. Congrats on uh, taking your game to new heights. All right. Yeah. Man. All right, well, I'm going to go with Jaguars running back, ETN, baby. Ooh. Totaled 184 scrimmage yards. That's 136 rushing, 48 receiving, and had two rushing touchdowns in the Jaguars' Week 5 win that we just talked about. Um, He became the first player ever with at least 175 scrimmage yards and two touchdowns in an international game. Ooh. Man, we're killing it with the LeBron stats this week. Um, (laughs) After the game, ETN tweeted, I played against myself in fantasy football today. Sad emoji. Uh, (laughs) Can we play fantasy football? I didn't even know we were allowed to play fantasy football. I'm pretty sure you can play up to like a winning of like $200, but I I can't get into it. All right. Way to go, baby. I just love watching this dude play. He's fun to watch, man. He's fun to watch. Smooth athlete, man. Dude, I, I mean, we, you see it right there. 136 rushing and 48 receiving. He can do it all. I love seeing running backs that are that dynamic that, you know, you can do uh, a bunch of different things with them. It just opens up the offense that much more. And uh, with Dougie P at the helm, you give him a weapon like you know, that, he's going to take you know advantage, he's of it, advantage of it, baby. You know he's Alrighty. taking advantage of it. All right, that's it. That wraps up this episode of New Heights. Make sure you're subscribed on YouTube to the New Heights channel so you know when new episodes are coming out. And make sure you check out our new bonus video at the end of the week, exclusively on our YouTube page. We'll be previewing our week six matchups and play uh, some more clips for you guys to enjoy. Listen and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Once again, New Heights is presented by Wave Sports and Entertainment. 
Who would have thought? <laughs> and this episode specifically is presented by the all new Experience Smart Money debit card. Ooh. The debit card that builds credit without the debt. How about that? You got to get this in your wallet, ladies and gentlemen. Follow the show on all social media at New Heights Show with one S for fun clips throughout the week. And thank you to our production and crew for always making us look way better than what we are. And thank you to the 92 percenters. We love you guys and we'll see you Friday. Peace. Peace. Is that how it goes? <laughs> <laughs>